In this tutorial, we will design and create the CAM toolpath to cut a complicated pattern on a CNC router. We will go the extra mile and make this fully parametric while tackling some issues with constraints in the design environment and with our cutter in the manufacture environment. Stay all the way to the end to learn one special trick with Infusion. Welcome to the Learner Channel. Let's design and mill a complicated art pattern. So the first thing we're going to do is create a sketch and we'll make our stock here. So I'm going to create a rectangle. We can just press R for the shortcut key and I'll go over here to the center rectangle and with our center point created at the origin. And I'm just going to put in some arbitrary values here, five inches by five inches. Why not? Let's go finish sketch. And now let's extrude it. And here we can just press E for the extrude shortcut. Let's go minus one inch. There we have it. Now we need to create another sketch on this face right here. I could go create and create sketch, but the easiest way to do it is just right click on that face and create a sketch. So this inherits all that geometry on the face and I'll prove it to you. Let's just hide the body and you can see that we've retained all of that geometry. So this is good to keep in mind. Let's go back over here and create another rectangle. R is the shortcut. We'll go center rectangle again, center point at the origin. And here, we're just going to create the size for our art. And I'm gonna type in three inches by three inches. And remember, tab goes back and forth. It jumps back and forth between those two dimensions. I'm gonna hit enter. Now let's make this dimension always the same as this. So we double click that. And all we do is click the three. And you can see it changes to D6. When I hover over this value, D6 pops up. So it's saying that this dimension is gonna be the same as that. Let's go enter. This is perfect. Now let's add a parameter because we'd like to make this fully parametric. So if I go to modify, change parameters is at the bottom. If I click on that kebab menu, you can see I've already pinned it to my toolbar. This up here is called the toolbar. So there it is right there. If you don't have it, make sure to check pin to toolbar. So let's go to change parameters. And I'm going to add a parameter right here. And I'm going to call it our box size. Remember with parameters, we can't have spaces in between. So I like to just separate my words with capitals. Some also like to include an underscore. So whatever method you'd like to use is great. Now I'm going to call this three inches. We're going to go OK. Let's go OK over here. I'm going to go back to this dimension. Make sure to click on the dimension that is not a parameter. I'm going to double click that and we're going to start spelling box size. I just have to put in the B O or the first few letters or whatever, and then hit enter, hit enter again. So now if I go back to parameters, I can change this to four inches. I can change this to two inches, whatever dimension we'd like. Let's go back to three just for fun and go OK. Now, in order for this to work in the Fusion Cam environment or workspace, we need to work with pockets. And the way we make pockets is with closed profiles. So we can see since the sketch that we created on this face inherited all the geometry, that was a closed profile. Now we've created this box inside of it and this is a closed profile as well. So we've got two closed profiles, but how do we make more? Well, let's just go over to the construction line. This is automatically created when we make a center point rectangle. I'm gonna click on that line and press X. That's the shortcut. I could also go up here to the line type and I can toggle that on and off, but let's make it solid. Let's do the same thing over here. X is the shortcut again. It makes your life a whole lot easier when you remember these shortcuts. And now we have one, two, three, four closed profiles. So this is looking even better. Now let's continue to make the rest of our sketch. So I'm gonna go three point arc. I'm gonna go from corner to corner. And here we have just an arc. I'm gonna make it an arbitrary value right now so that it's unconstrained. You can see there sketch number two is not fully constrained. It's got this little pencil and sketch, which means it's still being edited. Now the secret here is I need to make this arc tangent to this line. I need to constrain it. So I'm gonna go up here to constraints, pick the tangent, pick the arc, and then the line. And now it makes it perfectly smooth in line with those two edges. Now, if you are new to constraints or you find them frustrating, we have just created an in-depth video all about constraints. We wholeheartedly encourage you to check that video out 
it explains not only why we use them, but how we use constraints. We want to create another arc first. Let's go top left to bottom right. And here, I'm going to do a little different. Remember, we picked the tangent constraint first and then the arc and the line. Let's pick the arc first. And then you can see all of the constraints that are currently available for us are bold. The ones that aren't are kind of in the background here, not really a little transparent, and we cannot click them. So let's go to tangent and we can pick that line. And there we go. We could have also picked this line right here and it would have made that arc tangent. Very good. Let's continue. Let's create another three point arc and we're going to go from this point to that point right there. And now here's a third way of creating a constraint. I'm just going to bring the arc so that it automatically snaps to the right location and using a tangency constraint. And you can see in the top right corner, there's a little tangency constraint symbol. So if I click my mouse, there we go. You can see it is fully constrained. Now, if I go back and do the other side right there and do the exact same thing, I'm going to move my mouse until that tangency constraint shows up. Click. And there we go. But what happened here? How come it's not fully constrained? Well, for some reason, it didn't snap to this point. And I can show you if I just grab this blue arc, you can see the problem. Yeah, it didn't constrain for some reason. So just move it on over and we need to make this endpoint constrained to here. And the one we use for that is coincident. So sometimes these problems happen. No need to worry. There we go. We just can easily fix it. Now you can see we've got all these close profiles all the way around our arc right here. And in fact, we need to add a couple lines as well. So let's do that from this intersection to there. And we go from that intersection to there, right there. So that looks great. Sketch number two is fully constrained. All these closed profiles will need to extrude. But if we extrude them all at once, then it will just create one giant pocket. That's three inches by three inches. So we need to create an offset. Now, let's create this as a parameter first of all. So change parameters. I'm going to add another one and we're going to call this our offset. And let's just create another arbitrary value of 50 thou. We can always change this later. Let's go OK. And let's go to our offset tool. Here, I can pick all the lines that were created together. So in these, this case, these four lines were created together. I've got two sides selected. I only want to do it on the inside. Once we select that, we're just going to select our distance. Here's a little secret as well. I could fuss and fiddle with my mouse cursor and try and pick the and delete whatever I want. Many do that, but here's a little secret that works across not only Fusion, but most applications out there is if I double click, it picks that word. If I triple click, it selects the entire paragraph or the entire line. So if I do that, I can just start typing in offset. Again, you don't have to type in the entire word or the entire parameter, just the first letter or two is fine. And you can cycle through them if there's a bunch, but I'm just gonna hit enter and enter again to lock it in place. Now let's go back to offset. I'm gonna pick this and that. Now I wanna make it two-sided. And look at this, if I type in offset, Here's a problem that shows up. If I zoom on in here to these two dimensions, this one is a parameter and this one is not. So what did we do wrong? Well, let's undo this. Control Z or Command Z on a Mac. Let's go back to offset. Let's pick those two profiles and look over here. We're going to type in offset, but we need to link the offsets. Now, if we go OK, both of these will be parameters. So that's the one we want to keep. And we're just going to go around the clock and add this offset to all of our sketch elements. And O is the shortcut for offset. So that makes our life a whole lot easier. We can also right click and pick the last tool that we just used. In this case, repeat offset. Let's do that. Repeat offset. Perfect. And look at how easy this is here. Very good. So everything looks like it has this offset and all of them are parameters as well. So just to make sure it's got the little FX in front of it. But you may notice that our sketch is not fully constrained. As we create that offset, you can see that the two lines that were created in this instance are not linked to anything, the endpoints, I should say. So let's just link this to something that will retain our pockets. I'm going to go coincident constraint and I'm going to select that and the arc. There we go. 
and that fully constrains those points. And here we're just going to go around the clock again. Middle mouse button helps us to pan, so that's very easy just to use the middle mouse button. Perfect, and last two. Once we do that, you can see our sketch is fully constrained. Now, if we've done this right, when we update the size of our box, everything should update correspondingly. So let's go four inches and see what happens. Press enter. There we go, everything is updated. Let's change our offset and see what happens. Let's go 25 thou. Everything updates automatically. So this is looking great. Let's go okay. Let's finish that sketch, go to our ISO view. And now we're gonna go to extrude, or you remember the shortcut? E, that's right. So let's go all across over here and pick all of our profiles, our closed profiles, and create some pockets. There we go. And let's just go down. It doesn't really matter what depth we go to, and I'll prove that later, but let's just go to minus 0.8 for the fun of it. And we've got this beautiful shape. But as you could see on the thumbnail to this video, it needs to be engraved or we're not actually going to create a generic pocket. We're going to create that nice engraved look with a 45 degree cutter. So the depth really doesn't matter because we're actually going to be selecting these closed profiles on the top. Now, just for fun, let's go to parameters one more time and I'm going to change this. Let's go to three inches and just make sure nothing breaks. There we go. 25,000. So this even works in our 3D environment. So I'm going to go back to 50,000. There we go. Now we are ready for the cam workspace. So let's go to manufacture workspace. We're going to create a setup. I'm going to turn off uh, on our stock all of our sides and top. I'm just going to say no additional stock and setup. We're not going to worry about the WCS right now. Let's go OK. Now here's the thing. We're going to go to 2D and use the engrave tool. Let's select our tool. I'm just going to bring up a random one. And let's go, I'm just going to call this, what, a half inch engraving tool. That looks pretty good. And now under geometry, it asks, what would I like to select? Well, it's contour selection right now. So I'm just going to pick that. And you can see I can just go around the clock, actually, and pick all these different contours. Very good. Now, the last thing we need to change for this tutorial is our heights. The top height is set to minus 0.2375. But let's just go to... Well, I'll show you what the difference is here that we don't need to calculate the height. Fusion will calculate it for us. I could just go to, well, let's keep it at minus 2375 and see what it looks like. And we'll go to simulate with machine. Let's turn that on. And you can see, yeah, it looks pretty good. You can see it didn't go quite deep enough right here. So there's this extra little mountain in this valley right here that we want to get rid of. So let's go just go exit simulation. We're going to go back to our engrave operation or tool, go to heights. And I'm just going to make this, let's just call it one inch just for fun to show you that it's not going to go all the way down to one inch, but rather it's going to find the max value up to one inch in order to create the shape. So be careful with that just to make sure that your machine doesn't smash in anything. So make sure to simulate, make sure to look over your code as well. Make sure everything looks really good, but we can simulate this and press play. Well, this is looking really good right there. Now, the cool thing with this being parametrically controlled is we can go back to the design workspace. We can go to our parameters and we can go with something like this. Let's go to four inches. And I'm going to change the offset to 25 thou and go OK. Now, if we go back to our manufacturer environment, we'll have to regenerate this. So right click, generate, and everything will be updated. Now you can see we have a bunch of errors right here because the size of our tool needs to be bigger. You can see that it won't actually be cutting these sections. So in order to fix this, we need a bigger tool. I'm just going to go into tool. Let's edit this particular one. I'm going to go to the cutter and change our diameter to, let's call it three quarters of an inch. There we go. Let's go accept. And this should fix it. This is a much bigger tool. There we go. So if we simulate this now. Perfect. So it's probably good to just use this three quarter inch tool as it is in order to machine whatever type, kind of pockets. And you just have to be careful with that. Make sure to simulate, make sure to see what's going on with your model and your pattern to make sure nothing is colliding and everything is cutting 
well. Now here's a little secret too. If we'd like to export this as an STL, make sure to run the simulation first. Don't exit the simulation, but right click on your model, go to stock, and you can save the stock as an STL. So if you've benefited from this tutorial, please consider liking. If you love our channel, please consider smashing that subscribe button. And if you really love us, please consider becoming a YouTube or Patreon member. On Patreon, we have a ton of extra goodies, including practice drawings, behind the scenes tutorials. You can download all of the models that we've created on our previous tutorials. You can engage with the community as well. So please check it out. So thanks for tuning in and hope you continue to learn CAD CAM with the Learn It channel.